Happy Valentine's Day, gang. Yes, it is Valentine's Day. Oh. I don't know. Do you happen to have a sweetheart who you're taking out later on tonight out on the town? Maybe your sweetheart's taking you out. Maybe you're both going Dutch. Hmm. Then again, maybe you've got nothing cooking for Valentine's Day and you're sort of, oh, oh, Valentine's Day. Oh. I don't know. I can't tell you. I can only tell you two things for certain. First, I am sending out virtual hugs, platonic hugs, by the way, to all of you out there for Valentine's Day because I love all of you in a very platonic way. And the other thing is the Daily Dope is in the air. Howdy, 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 gang. Yes, happy Valentine's Day to everyone. Today is Wednesday, February 14th, 2018. I am Jeff McAleer. I am the host here at the Daily Dope as well as the Grand Poobah over at thegaminggang.com. Welcome aboard. If you have not joined me on the show before, hey, just want to tell you that there is chat available. It is available through Twitch as well as YouTube. It's not on screen, but I do take a peek at the chat. So if you want to say hello or when I do the unboxing a little bit later on, if you have any questions or want to see something a little closer up, Feel free to chime in. Anyway, if you've never watched the show before, thanks for stopping by. If you like the show, like the channel, be sure to subscribe. And uh, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. I always appreciate that. So I've got quite a bit cooking on today's show. And uh, I've got some news. I've got uh, a little bit of a preview for a Kickstarter that I think a lot of people are pretty pumped up about even non-gamers, so I'm going to talk about that in just a couple of moments. But today I will be unboxing Space Empires Replicators from GMT Games. It is the second expansion for Space Empires 4X. And then uh, if you're curious what I've got cooking for the rest of the week, I was up in the air for tomorrow because it's Thursday. I like to talk about RPGs on Thursdays, but I hadn't finished reading this one role-playing game supplement because there's actually, it's from Adventure Week Games and there's a lot to it. So I hadn't finished up and I thought, gosh, what am I going to do for tomorrow's show? And then suddenly, now granted, it's not an RPG, out of nowhere from White Wizard Games came Hero Realms, yeah, Hero Realms. And it is from the same folks who created Star Realms, which I've heard a lot of good things about. And not only did I get the boxed set here, this little box here, but I got the Thief deck, the Wizard deck, the Ranger deck, I've got the Cleric deck and the Fighter deck, as well as two boss decks. Ready? Get ready. There's the Dragon. Oh. And the Lich, or like, people pronounce it differently. I always, I always said Lich, like the Lich King, something like that. So I am going to be looking at these tomorrow. So, uh, well, I guess it's an unboxing, right? This is in a box. So we're going to take a look at all of that. Then on Friday, I will be unboxing the agents from Ninja Division, a bit of a sci-fi game. It says ages 14 and up, but I don't know. Uh, Fridays tend to be family fun Fridays. Uh, I don't know. It doesn't strike me as something that, you know, some of your like preteens could probably get into. It might be the 14 up thing is once again components because that's how things have to be marketed here in the United States. Then on Monday, oh, yep, I got it. For a second, I thought I didn't bring it down. I will be reviewing Gaslands, 
the post-apocalyptic vehicular combat game from Osprey Games. It is a miniatures rule set, so that's going to be pretty cool. Uh, let's see. Tuesday. Oh, um, yeah, I forget. Oh, I know what I was going to do on Tuesday. Okay, so I felt bad yesterday. If you watched yesterday's show, you know that I had a problem with my right contact, and it was really bad, especially down here in the duct tape studios because it's dry. There's a lot of dust. In fact, I feel a sneeze coming on right now out of the blue. Uh, the cats hang out down here, so there's some cat dander. So anyway, so I had, my right contact was really bothering me, and about halfway through my review of Darkest Night, maybe not even halfway, because right in the beginning of the show, the contact really started acting up. Uh, boy, I tell you, I just, my eye was watering. It, people had actually emailed and said, geez, man, it looked like you were coming down with a cold right in front of our eyes. My nose was running. My voice was all kind of like this. And I could barely see. <laughs> so it was sort of like, uh. So I just was really discombobulated on that review. I did pretty much provide my final thoughts uh, coherently. But what I'm going to do on Tuesday is I am going to do kind of a quick how to play of Darkest Night 2nd Edition from Victory Point Games. I'll take about maybe 45 minutes to uh, kind of run through a turn or two, kind of give you a better feel for all the goodness that is packed within Darkest Night because I gave it a 9.1 out of 10. And then on Wednesday, I guess Victory Point Games must be looking to, to wrest control of War Game Wednesday away from GMT Games because GMT Games tends to, to be on the show on Wednesdays a lot. I am going to unbox the brand spanking new Chariots of Rome from Victory Point Games designed by Sean Young. And I know some folks are probably sitting out there thinking, well, geez, Jeff, you're going to wait till Wednesday? Gosh, that's a whole week away. You know how many people are going to be doing unboxing videos? Yeah, it's not that big a deal. I don't need to be the first one to be unboxing stuff. All right, so anyway, uh, I've got a couple items from the mailbag. I will talk about those after the news because I believe we may have a few folks floating around who have not visited the show before because they're looking for more information about a Kickstarter that's coming from Night Models next month. In fact, a month from today, it'll be March 14th, and it is the Harry Potter Miniatures Adventure Game. Yes, that's right. This is going to be huge. And I've got some dope from Night Models. Welcome to the wizarding world. Night Models is proud to present the Harry Potter Miniatures Adventure Game. This brand new board game allows players to immerse themselves in J.K. Rowling's wizarding world like never before. In this game, each player takes control of a group of witches and wizards from the Harry Potter cinematic saga, each represented by a finely detailed resin miniature, sculpted to exacting detail in collaboration with Warner Brothers. Each 35 millimeter miniature is produced in high quality resin, making it ideal for collectors, painters, and gamers alike. Oh yes, I can tell you right now, the collectors are going to jump all over this without any interest whatsoever in the actual game. Speaking of the game, during the game, players must outmaneuver their opponents across beautifully illustrated game boards representing many of the iconic locations from the Wizarding World, such as Hogwarts, the Chamber of Secrets, and the Forbidden Forest. Players must explore these environments, resolving challenges and quests in order to secure victory. The Harry Potter Miniatures Adventure Game gives players complete freedom to form their own group of witches and wizards. Players can collect their favorite models and equip them with potion and artifact cards and, of course, a dizzying array of spells. The variety of options at your disposal means no two games are the same. The Harry Potter Miniatures Adventure Game is easy to learn and fun to play. It's free-flowing, dynamic gameplay means you'll want to return again and again to unleash new characters and abilities and perfect your tactics. 
The Harry Potter Miniatures Adventure Game is coming to Kickstarter on March 14th, 2018, and Night Models invites you to join them in this magical adventure. On February 27th, Night Models' website will update, and they will add new Harry Potter Miniatures Adventure Game uh, info, as well as a site where you will find amazing content, videos, news, and updates about the Kickstarter campaign. I do have a video, it's kind of a pre-launch video, that will show off a lot more of the Harry Potter miniatures adventure game than I've been able to track down some images of. So why don't we take a peek? It's a pretty short video. So let's jump in and take a look. As I mentioned, pretty quick video. I don't have any sort of like super insider dope as far as this Kickstarter yet, but I do want to tell you a little bit about what I know about Night Models. And Night Models is a Spanish company, 95% uh, positive they're a Spanish company, and they mainly focus on miniatures. Now they've got a DC Universe, DC Comics Universe game, miniatures game. Uh, I think they also have a Batman miniatures game, which is, I, I think it's a little bit different than the DC Universe one. They used to actually produce a licensed Marvel Universe miniatures game, but I think that license expired, so I don't see any of that info out there anymore. But what I can tell you is the sculpts on their miniatures are phenomenal. They are amazing sculpts. And I invite you to go over to nightmodels.com and check these out because they are gorgeous. And of course, they're all painted by just amazing professionals. One thing I can mention, because I remember I would run across news items for the Marvel game quite a bit. And the way they would actually sculpt their models is they were almost like I don't want to say dioramas, but they're, they, you know, like Spider-Man would be like on a, on a part of a rooftop and things like that. And it sort of struck me as being a little odd because it's kind of like, um, so in a miniatures game, that's Spider-Man and he's, they had different sculpts, don't get me wrong, but they were amazingly cool. So of course, people who love to paint miniatures, maybe not necessarily game with them, of course, would go hog wild. I did notice uh, on the DC yeah, a little bit of that too. One thing I have noticed with this Harry Potter miniatures adventure game is they do have standard gaming uh, bases to the models themselves, to the miniatures themselves. So that is pretty cool. I think uh, that is going to appeal to a lot more people who want to game with this game that looks pretty jam-packed with goodies. It appears uh, from the images that I've been able to catch we might be seeing maybe 10 characters in the core game because it looks like the core game comes in a tin. And uh, I, I notice there's like miniature spiders and things like that. So there might be some additional creatures. Something else about Night Models that I should point out is if you compare their miniatures to other miniatures companies, they are pretty pricey for single figures. They usually run about $12 and up. I do recall some of the bigger, like say, like the Incredible Hulk or Bane, sometimes they run up to about $20. Now, those I believe are metal. They are not resin, I don't think. So what I'm basically trying to tell you is when the Kickstarter launches, and of course I will have news about the launch. I'm sure 
Night Models will have uh, another video for the launch, much longer, probably give you a bit of gameplay information as well. If you find that the pricing overall is pretty steady, say around $10 a miniature, gobble it up. Also, if you find that the international shipping is free and you happen to live in North America, once again, take a real hard look at jumping on board this Kickstarter because international shipping can be really expensive. And as I mentioned, Night Models is not here in the U.S., so this looks very, very cool. I know some of the Potter fans out there have probably peed themselves a little bit, even with that short video. And okay, full disclosure here. I don't have anything against Harry Potter, either the books, the movies, J.K. Rowling. Just I just never got into it. Uh, I watched, I think it was like the first two or three movies and they were fine. I mean, I was like, oh yeah, these are okay. But I wasn't like, wow, <laughs> So, um, just got to toss that out there. So, for somebody who kind of has uh, a passing knowledge of Harry Potter, I think this looks really awesome. <laughs> so, take that for what that's worth. Of course, absolutely no word yet on what you're looking at as far as a pledge level to get the core game. That information will probably come out to the media a week or so before Fingers crossed, we may be able to share that info for you. I will assume that there are going to be a lot of stretch goals as well as add-ons that you'll be able to purchase as well at discounts because the video alone showed quite a lot of sculpts. And I'm sure there are a lot of sculpts that are not going to be obviously in the core game. So keep your eyes peeled. As soon as I have more information and we get close to the Kickstarter, if it's some really solid info from Night Models, I will definitely share that with you. And uh, about half of the people watching the live stream are going to leave just about now. <laughs> That's kind of why I wanted to make sure I got the Harry Potter news out there first thing, because I have a feeling that there were probably a few people who were popping in who wanted to check it out. So, and I'm cool like that. I'm not going to be like, okay, well, uh, at the end of the news, I'm going to have this uh, cool item that everybody should be checking out. No, no, no. All right, moving right along. Fans of Dungeons and & Dragons and digital games will be very happy to know that Montreal-based developer Ludia, not familiar with them, Yesterday announced their first partnership with Wizards of the Coast, known leaders in fantasy role-playing games. Of course, this is a dope. It's according to Wizards... Well, no. Well, yeah, it's according to Wizards of the Coast PR company, who are very cool. I always... Yeah, they're a very cool company. Um, and, you know, I know a lot of people dislike Wizards of the Coast for whatever reason over the year. I think they're cool. They always treat me really, really nicely. Always very, very nice to me, so I have absolutely no issues with them. And I like 5th edition D&D, even though I don't run it. Anyway, back to the news. So, Ludia and Wizards of the Coast are going to develop a mobile game based on the eternal fan favorite Dungeons & Dragons franchise with the working title Warriors of Waterdeep. We are thrilled to be partnering with Wizards of the Coast on such an enduring and wildly popular entertainment franchise, said Alex Thabet, Thabet, Thabo, guessing on the name, folks, CEO of Ludia. It's important to us that our game stays true to the Dungeons & Dragons storytelling ethos and the Forgotten Realms fantasy setting. We can't wait to share this game with fans. Warriors of Waterdeep, well, that's the working title right now, is slated for a soft release this spring. Players can sign up to be notified when the game becomes available at warriorsofwaterdeep.com. There is a quick teaser trailer that's going to show a bit of the gameplay. It focuses more on combat than actual story. So I'm sort of getting the impression that this is more of a combat-centric sort of game, but it does look pretty neat. 
So kick back. It's about a minute. Let's take a look. As you can see, Warriors of Waterdeep is going to be available for iOS as well as Android. No word yet on a PC version. In fact, I was very, very surprised not to actually get uh, an official like press release that went into more detail. Don't know. I can't tell you when we're looking at a release. I don't know pricing info. I can't tell you if this is going to be like free to play with microtransactions, anything like that. But I can tell you that uh, come springtime, it is a soft rollout. So I don't know. I know what a soft rollout is, <laughs> but I mean, I don't know what exactly might be going on with this mobile game. Although it does look kind of interesting. I kind of get a kick. Well, it's Dungeons and Dragons, right? So of course you got to throw a dragon in there. I love how the dragon just kind of like spew and flame over all the characters. Yeah, I have a little of this. There you go. Anywho, last week, uh, I believe it was last week, sometimes these shows all kind of merge into one, but uh, I believe it was last week, I reviewed Tiny Dungeon 2nd Edition from Gallant Knight Games, and I liked it. I thought it was pretty cool. I thought the little micro settings were kind of hit or miss, but I thought that it was a pretty, pretty cool book. Well, Gallant Knight Games has a new Kickstarter for another Tiny D6 game, and it is Tiny Wastelands, and it's a post-apocalyptic role-playing in a minimalist package, and I've got the dope. Using the rules in this book, you'll be able to play survivors of lost and destroyed civilizations, mutants rampaging the wastelands, and so, so much more. Character creation is simple, fast, and exciting. You pick your character type based on the exciting stories your game master is going to tell. You pick a few traits that each grant a single benefit, and you're done. And there is no joke there. The player character creation in Tiny Dungeon 2nd Edition is really quick at most, maybe 10 minutes. And that's just when you have players who can't really figure out what they want to do as far as traits. Anyway, sometimes you don't have time to plot lengthy, detailed worlds but you want that experience. Well, we've got your back. And that support comes in the form of micro settings. Micro settings are short settings filled with adventure hooks and designed to be, I'm sorry, and designed to scavenging adventures with minimal effort. Our goal is to fund a soft cover edition, a limited number of hardcover collector's editions, and the tiny wastelands dice. We've planned several stretch goals, which will increase page count and provide you with more fun and engaging content. The project is actually a relaunch from our project last year, which was canceled when the owner of Nocturnal Media passed away. I recall that. Since then, GKG has split back out into its own company and we're back with Tiny Wastelands. Time and space have necessitated a few changes and printing costs have gone up. So our price points have changed in the last seven months 
and the project isn't exactly the same. Regardless, we are aiming for the same success and quality we always have. I do want to mention the Tiny Wastelands Kickstarter is already 300% funded as these words leave my mouth. And you can reserve a copy of the book in PDF for a $10 pledge, the physical soft cover book, and a slew of other goodies at the $35 pledge level. The project runs through March 15th with an expected delivery of August 2018. So I will mention, as far as Gallant Night Games, if you're interested in this kind of post-apocalyptic setting, and, and when they say it's a minimalist game, they are not kidding. Uh, Alan Barr, I believe is the pronunciation of his last name. Uh, yeah, it's it's very minimalist, not tons of rules. You're not sitting there going, oh, okay, now what? And really, all your resolution is done by six-sided dice. Normally, you roll two, five or six is a success. If you're disadvantaged, you're only rolling one, and if you're advantaged, you're rolling three, and that's kind of how it all breaks down. And then, of course, there were a bunch of just optional rules that you could utilize to make it a little crunchier. But if you have any interest in this, I do want to point out that you can get the PDF, you can reserve the PDF for $10. From my personal knowledge, I do know that the Gallant Knight PDF, so say for an example, Tiny Dungeon 2nd Edition, is normally $19.99 on Drive-Thru RPG. I've seen it on sale for like $17.99. So if you have any interest in this whatsoever, jump on board, even if you're just going to get the PDF, it's 10 bucks. And uh, I, I can tell you pretty strongly that if you do understand that this is a very minimalist rule set, uh, you'll be very happy to save a few bucks and uh, help support the project. So very cool. Uh, there's no video. Amazingly enough, I was kind of surprised. There's no Kickstarter video. Otherwise, I would have shared it. All right, moving right along, there is a game coming from Osprey Games and Martin Wallace. It is not scheduled to appear until the fourth quarter of this year, so it's a ways out, but it does seem intriguing, and it's called Wildlands. Yes, that's right, Wildlands. Here's the dope. Osprey Games is delighted to announce its first miniatures board game, Martin Wallace's Wildlands, scheduled for worldwide release in Q4 2018. In this fantasy game for two to four players, rival factions struggle for power in the ruins of a once great kingdom, now known simply as the Wildlands. Each skirmish sees players attempt to outwit, outmaneuver, and overpower their opponents as they fight for riches and glory scoring points by defeating enemy characters and collecting treasure. Familiarity with your favored faction will help, but adaptability is the key to victory, as a semi-randomized setup and double-sided board means that no two battles will tell the same tale. A great evil has fallen and has taken the capital with it. Where once there was a kingdom, there is now only the Wildlands. In a lawless fantasy world, you must band together for survival, treasure, or maybe even glory. Players control rival factions, each with a unique deck of cards dictating their abilities across the battlefield. Some focus on ranged prowess, some on raw strength, and others on the bond between characters, offering a wide range of playstyles to explore. Created by award-winning game designer Martin Wallace, this miniatures board game contains everything you need to dive straight into the dynamic fantasy world of Wildlands. Simple enough to pick up and play, but packed with tactical nuances that will keep you coming back for more. It's the perfect approachable skirmish game with endless replayability. No word yet on an MSRP or an exact release date, I do understand that it will include 20 detailed miniatures, no word on the size, but Wildlands is for two to four players, ages 14 and up, and will play in about 30 to 60 minutes. All right, I know you're out there and you're thinking, hey, well, Jeff, come on, man, it's War Game Wednesday, what's going on? Uh, that was that last news piece, yeah, skirmish game, that's a little bit war gamey. How about some solid wargaming news? All right, well, I can tell you that Compass Games 
has a new World War I war game that's shipping out this month, and I've got the dope. Empires and Alliances is a new and improved game based on Avalon Hill's Guns of August, also designed by Rob Bema. I think it's Bema. Empires and Alliances is a strategic level simulation of the First World War. Players command the Central Powers and Allied forces that fought in Europe from 1914 to 1918. The map runs from the French Atlantic ports to Moscow and Rostov in the east. The map includes St. Petersburg in the north and Italy, Greece, and the portion of the Ottoman Empire that encompasses modern-day Turkey in the south. There are off-board boxes for the Caucasus and the Middle East. Terrain types include forests, swamps, mountains, rivers along hex sides, lakes, and major and minor cities. The basic unit is the core with a few divisions. Most of the minor countries have divisions and the major powers also have a few division breakdowns. There are infantry, cavalry, and army level artillery units. Tanks, air, and Stas Truppen begin to arrive in 1917. Units have historical corps and division IDs. Britain has her professional army at the start and receives territorial and Kitchener reinforcements in 1915 and 1916. The British Commonwealth has distinctive Australian, New Zealand, Indian, and Canadian units. The French also have their colonial and territorial units. There is a 1914 scenario which is played on all fronts. The Germans have to contend with a Russian advance as well as concentrating on the French. There's a nine-turn 1918 scenario where the Germans need to try to win quickly before American reinforcements overwhelm them. This scenario includes tanks, Stas Truppen, and air units. Then there's a four-year campaign game. Barring a quick victory in 1914, both players settle in for a war of attrition to exhaust their opponent. Britain can blockade the Central Powers and Germany can initiate submarine warfare against Britain. Countries entering the war or war weariness results can provide strategic opportunities for one player and major challenges for the other. There are sudden, <laughs> there are sudden death victory conditions that can end the game at the end of 1916 if either player is doing exceptionally well. Empires and Alliances is shipping on February 22nd, so you can obviously order it now. It is a mid-level complexity war game for two to four players. It also includes solitaire rules. And I know that uh, in the news piece, the uh, description of the game kind of focused on two players, but I, I'm positive that it does have some, some maybe additional rules for four players and solitaire play. It does carry an MSRP of $99, but is $75 as of right now. So there you have it. That is the news for today. All right. Uh, yeah, it's funny. It, it, it's, it's, I find it unusual where it seems like it doesn't matter if I got four news pieces, six news pieces. The news is always about a half hour. And that's cool because I, I like to, to share all that with you. So I'm sure some of the war gamers out there are tuning in because they want to find out who gets to win Wing Leader Blitz 1939 to 1942 because that was the contest that was going on on YouTube uh, for the past couple of weeks. And the winner for Wing Leader Blitz is Robert Moffat. Robert is our winner. It was pretty easy to win. All you had to do is uh, post a comment on either last Wednesday's show or the Wednesday before that show, and you were in the running. So there you have it. So, Robert, be sure to uh, reach out to me. Um, I will try to touch base, too, and uh, I will make sure this will go out uh, this weekend. I'll shoot over to the post office and get that out to you. Uh, priority mail is normally how I send stuff out. If you're kind of curious what I might have uh, for other for other giveaways, other contests, I am not going to announce how you can win it today. I'm going to actually announce it tomorrow. So I have to make uh, some tweaks to the Patreon page. 
I'm so I'm always so busy doing this stuff. I completely ignore the Patreon page, which I really shouldn't. But I got to be honest, it's kind of a downer because Patreon did that weird thing where they were trying to, you know, kind of fork over these um, processing charges to patrons. So if somebody was actually supporting, you know, your campaign for a dollar a month, it was going to jump up to like a dollar thirty five a month. So unfortunately for many of us, without a ton of patrons, um, a lot of them jumped ship. I lost well over half my patrons because they were all doing about a you know buck, two bucks, and then after they all bailed, then Pat- Patreon said, "Oh yeah, I guess that was a bad idea. We're not going to do that." So yeah, okay, thanks. Mm-hmm. Anyway, I'm going to do a giveaway for Talon, which is a science fiction game from. GMT Games. This is brand new in shrink. Woohoo! Look at that, baby. You don't necessarily have to be a war gamer. Strategy gamers will dig this too. And uh, I will announce how you can win this copy on tomorrow's show. I will mention it is going to be Patreon related. Sorry. Uh, this is like a $70, $75 game, I think. So, um, yeah. Anyway, I'll have other giveaways too. I've got, uh, I, I'm going to announce a couple more giveaways tomorrow. But since it's War Game Wednesday, I did want to uh, mention that. All right, so uh, let me jump into the mailbag real quick. Just a couple items. Uh, I am wearing a Blackhawks jersey today for the special reason that uh, somebody had uh, reached out to the mailbag. Got a question, comment, suggestion. Feel free to email mailbag at thegaminggang.com. And uh, it was more of a comment, and it was sort of a, uh, hey, Jeff, you wear Blackhawk stuff quite a bit. You do realize they suck this year, right? It's like, uh, yeah, yes, I do. I probably realize that more than most people because I watch them all the time. But I'm a fan, okay? Fan- Real fans know that there are ups and downs with their sports teams. Even when, you know, the New York Yankees back in the day win an all-world series, and I'm not talking 90s, I'm talking 50s, 60s, where the old joke was rooting for the Yankees was like rooting for U.S. Steel. Of course, U.S. Steel is, you know. And, of course, the Yankees had down years, too. It happens. Real fans stand by their teams. Plus, it's not as if I'm wearing, like, a Cleveland Browns jersey. No offense to people in Cleveland, none whatsoever. But, you know, they're terrible for a long, long time. When did they go to the playoffs last? I think Herbert Hoover was in the White House. Okay, I exaggerate. So, yeah, so that was uh, that was the item there. I was like, yeah, I'm a real fan. Just like my Cubs stuff that I'll wear. My jerseys are 10, 15, 20 years old. So, no, I, the real fans show our support even in the down years. That's not to say that Bears fans like myself aren't like, yeah, I'm not wearing no Bears stuff, man. They can't get their heads out of their butts for crying out loud. No. So, anyway, when, yeah, when a team's not trying to be better or they're trying but they're just clueless, no, I, I, don't, I don't wear stuff for them, <laughs> for those teams. Anyway, the second item I was going to point out is uh, I had a question because I had mentioned before that, you know, YouTube is going to demonetize the Gaming Gang videos. Yeah, a lot of people who do not have a thousand subscribers and so much, I think it's 4,000 hours of view time uh, over the past 12 months are going to get demonetized. And of course, my issue is I'm like 105 subscribers short. And I had mentioned a couple of times that uh, I, there might be some changes to the show uh, when they once they do that and they're kind of curious well you know what kind of changes are you talking about and uh, I mean nothing just insane I might swear a little bit I mean little I mean I'm not going to carpet F-bomb and things like that because um, sometimes you know there's there's something that you know pops kind of a some, something you would see on Network TV as a swear word is kind of what I'm talking about. And sometimes I just want to say, well, you know what? That's just a bunch of, you know, whatever. 
And then I have to stop and I go, okay, well, what's a, what's a family friendly way I could say that? <laughs> so I don't, maybe, you know, I, I don't know. Cause yeah, cause there are times where I, I find myself going, well, you know, I just want to say, boo. And I have to stop and go, mm. uh, and I will share more videos <laughs> We're, uh, and probably share more movie news and stuff, which, uh, I have gotten into the habit of uploading, uh, trailers and, and so on and so forth. Even like the Kickstarter videos, I upload them ahead of time on YouTube to make sure I don't get flagged for a copyright violation because of music or something like that. And, uh, especially at the movies right away, it says, oh, well, you know, uh, you're not going to be able to earn any money off of this so-and-so company owns rights. It's okay. You can have it in your video. We're not going to block the video, but they're going to make the money off your, your videos. Now, well, if they're demonetized, it doesn't really matter, right? Uh, the thing that irks me is that, uh, of course, YouTube's owned by Google. And if you run like Google AdSense, YouTube, all those things, you know, all that, those little bits of money that you pull in every month kind of go into like an account. Well, I don't do Google ads on GamingGang.com just simply because I like tar I like ads that are appropriate for the people who are actually on the website. You know, if you're checking out some new role-playing game, do you really need Dollar Shave ads or something like that? Hey, there's a big website out there that folks know about. Uh, they know what I'm talking about. Of course, you can pay to not see those ads. But uh, anyway, uh, moving right along. Yeah, to me, it's just, you know... It makes makes the website look cheesy in my book. Uh, so the whole point is that you only get paid out from Google when you hit a certain amount. It's, I think it's $100, right? And then it takes about 60 days for you to receive that payment. And of course, when they demonetize me, I'm going to be about $8 short of another 100 bucks. They'd be paying me. And I will bet you dollars to donuts that Google has no intention of paying people out when they demonetize their videos. I guarantee it. So it kind of irritates me that, uh, let's be honest here, Google's going to pocket millions of dollars that they should have paid out to all these people on YouTube that they're going to demonetize their videos. And we already know this whole shenanigans about, oh, well, you know, we're trying to protect the integrity of YouTube and that is a bunch of nonsense because the people who have been getting in trouble for their weird Nazi crap and poking dead bodies and videos and crap like that, they've got millions of subscribers. So this doesn't even affect them. So yeah, so that's what I was going to say. If there's any kind of changes that are going to happen, eh, maybe I'll be a little freer with um, a little more adult language sometimes. I don't know. I don't. Anyway, so we're going to take a peek at Space Empire's Replicators from GMT Games. Let's pop on over to the other camera here as I swing this on up. Now, this is the second expansion for Space Empire's 4X. And those in the know already realize that 4X is kind of a term that has been um, kind of drawn from computer games, console games, mainly computer games. And... The four X's represent Exhaust, Exhum, Expel, and the X-Men. I'm kidding. That is not what it means. Anyway, so Space Empire's 4X is a 4X science fiction game. And it is for one to four players. Now, Space Empire's Replicators, as I mentioned, is the second expansion. It's designed by... Uh, Jim Crone, and Jim Crone has done the other two Space Empire releases as well. Space Empire, uh, Space Empire's 4X, I believe, is still available from GMT, and you should be able to get it at some of your online retailers, maybe even your friendly local game store. I do know the second expansion, Close Encounters, is sold out. It's not available any longer. So, uh, before we dive in, let me just point out that as with all GMT titles, we're talking pretty much all GMT titles. If you see it and you want it, get it while you can, because if you go and wait and then it sells out, 
you are going to pay top dollar on the secondary market. I will tell you that right now. Uh, I have seen plenty of GMT games going for well over $200. And we're not talking about games that came out a decade ago either. So I, uh, I recall, uh, if you remember when I did my review for Wild Blue Yonder, which I love, which is right here. And uh, I had gotten into the, the series down in flames at Consum World Expo and really liked it. And I was like, oh, wow, I, I really want to pick this up. And I was picking up all the different releases, which were out of print and were, didn't come with hardly uh, nowhere near, I should say, as much as Wild Blue Yonder does. And I was paying at least $100 for each of those. So, yeah, yep, yep, yep. So get them while you can. So let's take a look at the back here. It says Space Empires Replicators is these, you know what? Let's take the plastic off first. Cause I'm getting some glare off of this. We don't need to be staring at the glare. There we go, that's better. There we have it. All right, Space Empires Replicators is the second expansion to Space Empires 4X. There are four major parts to this expansion. Replicators. Von Neumann machines or replicators are self-replicating machines. They have been added to the game and may be played by one player in the game. So much more than just adding a fifth player, they add an empire that plays completely differently than a normal empire. It is simpler to play, but it has its own challenges and difficulties. They behave, research, and reproduce differently than other empires, and they have their own empire advantages. Then there are terrain tiles. Hex-sized terrain tiles have been added for planets, asteroids, nebulae. It's nebula, isn't it? No, I guess it's nebulae. It's uh, plural. And other permanent terrain effects. Six whole sheets and 120 tiles. When an exploration marker reveals a terrain effect that stays on the map, the exploration marker is removed and replaced by a tile. This gives the map a nice visual effect and creates more room in the hexes. Resource deck. Each player is dealt his own random resource deck at the start of the game. These cards can be used as an event or turned in for CP. Some cards impact battles, exploration, economics, almost every aspect of the game, and they add some unpredictable twists and can impact your strategy. There's new ships and terrain. More new stuff has been added, including the Galactic Capital, which comes with its own scenario. Regional maps, space pirates, fold in space, battle carriers, fighters, advanced destroyers, advanced raiders, two new empire advantages, two new alien tech cards, and some additional and corrected counters. The system is exactly the same, but more awesomeness is added. I have not played Space Empires 4X in a few years. It's a cool game. It is a cool game. It is a good one. And that's why uh, I'm pointing out that um, yeah, I believe it's still, I think it's available. It's, I think it's a second printing or maybe even third printing. Uh, available from GMT. So uh, it's, nice, it's nice and meaty. It's a meaty game. Uh, also, I should point out that um, you do have to have <laughs> Space Empires 4X to play this expansion. And uh, GMT does recommend that you have the first expansion, Close Encounters, but it's not mandatory. The complexity is rated as a 4 as far as uh, GMT's 1 to 9. Eh, usually the way I find a lot of the GMT games for the average gamer, bump it up a number. So a 4 here would be about a 5, kind of in the middle. And Solitaire suitability is 9. So it means it is very, very uh, adaptable to Solitaire play. In fact, there's probably some uh, rules in here maybe talking about how to play Solitaire with these new additions. So you know what? Let me grab a quick sip here. Yes, for people, excuse me, for people who are always 
not always. I get a couple of comments once in a while, a little email saying, oh, you ramble on all the time, Jeff. When I take a sip from, <laughs> from that cup, <clears throat> isn't it kind of weird? To, I mean, to me, it sounds weird. It's like just dead air, nothing. Mm. All right, let's dig on in. Ha, 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 yeah. Oh, GMT is one of my favorite companies, and I love the fact that the people at GMT are super, super good folks. They are really some of the best people you'll run across in the game industry that I have met. Not saying that there's a lot of bad people in the industry. Don't get me wrong. There's a few. There's a few who's like, yeah, I interviewed you once or I talked to you once. Never again. But uh, no, the folks at GMT, Gene and Tony and the rest of the gang, super, super nice people. So here's the rule book. So let's take a peek. So we've got the introduction, talking about some rule changes and clarifications. Oh, see, we've got some clarifications for close encounters as well. And because there were two editions, so if you've only got the first edition of Space Empires, it's talking about some clarifications for that, as well as 1.1 and 1.2. Talking about using the terrain tiles. Let's get a better look at that. Galactic capital, the regional map, space pirates! Fold in space, folding laundry in space. Now it's fold in space. Conventions, say like Gen Con or Origins. Advanced bases, DDX, Fighter 4 and BV. Miners, Scouts, Advanced Flagship, New Alien Tech, and Empire Advantage cards. So those are the Alien Tech. These are the Advantage cards. Resource card rules. It's got a list of the resource cards. Oh, wow. Quite a few of them. And that's pretty cool. I, another thing, now I, I'm sure we're not going to see a playbook. It would have been right under here. But GMT is always really good about going into you know, detailed explanation, especially with games that include some sorts of cards in them. Kind of going into detail about each of the cards, as opposed to just here's the flavor text or here's the text on the card saying this is what it does. They give you a little more background about it. Kind of a lot of times, like in with historical games, like I did the uh, the How to Play Twilight Struggle last week one of the things I love is in the in the rule book there's a section where it'll show each of the cards and then it talks about okay so what it what does this card historically represent what was this event very very nice movement and colonization production combat research com I should say combat pause research Construction points, strategy advice, balancing. Now they're going to talk about the Replicator Empire advantages. Talking about some additional counters. It says there are 38 counters provided in the game that do not have rules for them. The 37 counters are labeled do, uh, DYO. But do it yourself? <laughs> On the revealed side, and they're to cover lost damage counters or to allow the players to add their own ship terrain rules to the game. Nice. Cool. And then we got the scenarios. So we've got scenarios using the Space Empire's map, scenarios using the Talon map. Oh yeah, that's right. I forgot there's a way that you can kind of port Talon over into Space Empire's 4X. I completely forgot, or vice versa. Sequence of play during combat and movement. Solitaire for playing the replicators. Yeah, I figured we'd see some special solitaire rules for that. All right, and then combat once again. I believe this is probably yeah, converting hulls of ships. It is part of the replicators. Yep, it is. 
And then, oh, nothing on the back. Hey, that's surprising. Usually there's something on the back of the book. Okay, so we've got a new card for the replicators for their empire. Got a ship chart for them. Looks like we might have a few of these ship charts. There's a research chart. There is the ship chart. And there are four of these. Yep, and they are all identical. So there's four of those. You got your production sheet. There's a lot of stuff that you track in Space Empires and 4X, I should say. And that is kind of one of the reasons why I have not been able to get it to the table with really anybody here since I moved back from Arizona, simply because it's a little... Some of the some of the gang members aren't uh, aren't up to speed on some of these kind of games, which is unfortunate. Okay, so we've got the first sheet of counters here. Ah, there we go. Asteroids. Nicely done. Now we got another sheet. And on the back. So these planets, these planetary tiles are dual sided. And then some of these other planets are showing asteroids instead. Some of these, some of these uh, hexagonal tiles. Got another sheet. Mm hmm. It's barren. Uh -huh. More asteroids. But yes, including these tiles, are, is, it's really going to change up the look of the Space Empire's map. I can tell you that right now. And yeah, it's going gonna, it's gonna to jazz it up. Black hole, nebula, just empty space. More asteroids. Lots and lots of these tiles. They say 100, I believe it's at 120, 120 of these tiles. Just more empty space. Got supernova, fold in space, warp point, the barren planet, more asteroids, more black holes and nebula. And right, then we're going to go get into the counter sheets here. Taking a look here. Got some of the different ships. Uh, look like these might be the replicators here. Maybe not. I think these are the original empires already. So. Okay, so we've got that. Ah, I believe these should be the replicators. Yep, there we go. I think 99.9% uh, .9 positive because there are a lot of these counters here. Out of these purple counters. So this looks like, yeah, that is that is the Empire itself for the replicators uh, for a fifth player. Pretty cool. Got a bunch of baggies. Obviously enough, GMT loves to give you baggies for all the counters. And then we've got some new cards. So let's pop these on open. Take a look. See what we got. Some of these out. So these are res well, resource cards. All right, so these are all resource cards. These are some of the new Empire Advantage cards. And alien technology. Oh, so okay. So these are for, I was gonna say, wait a second, why are these different colored backs? Different style backs. These are for the replicators. So that is their advantage deck. So let's take a look at the resource cards. Cool, and there's artwork on them too. Nice, Red Squadron. 
<laughs> Red Force standing by. Sensor blind spot. Self destruct. To the last, I grapple with the <laughs> cool little nods to different science fiction movies and series. A heroic battleship, or uh, I believe this is a battle carrier, battle cruiser. Now it would be BC. It's a. Uh, yeah, it might be one of the carriers. Like I said, it's been a long time since I played. Heroic ground units. Research breakthrough. Cool. Quick study. Discover member of ancient race. What's the flavor text here? He was frozen for millions of years. You could learn so much from him. Okay, I'm not going to be a spoiler here. I'm going to spoil all this. There you go. Spawn doomsday machine. Yes, I remember there's a solitaire scenario in Space Empires 4X, where it's a doomsday machine that you have to defeat. A little spy on board, deep cover operative. Was that smuggler's route? For a second, I thought it said smuggler's run. Play dead. Nice. Okay, cool. So these are the resource cards, the new resource cards. Then we've got the Empire Advantage deck for the replicators. Fast replicators, green replicators, improved gunnery, warp gates, advanced research, replicator capital. And then finally, we've got the alien. Well, I shouldn't say finally. There's two other kind of little cards here. So these are the Empire Advantage deck that any of the Empire's outside of the replicators can have because uh, from what I understand, I, and it's very possible I'm wrong, uh, but I do know that the replicators play very, very differently than the other empires. So I don't believe they would be able to take advantage of any advantage. That's weird. Take advantage of any advantage card <laughs> other than their own. Whereas the other empires don't necessarily have specific decks that are crafted just for them. So we've got that on the move in Longbowman. And then for the alien technology, we've got Onboard Workshop and Super Highway. Because life is just a super highway. And I want to ride it all night long. Cool. So we've got those cards there. So we've got the various different new cards. Uh, we've got the new resource cards. We've got two sheets of counters, dual-sided. I don't think I was showing off that they're dual-sided. And these are really well cut because just as I picked it up, they started popping out. Always like that. Uh, talking about counters, um, I don't trim my counter corners. I don't have like a counter corner trimmer. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what the appeal of it is. Is it just so your, your counters are just really, really sharp? and pretty I don't know uh, but I see a lot of people doing that uh, I, I've seen people like tweet the girl like oh yeah well yeah I'm just cutting cutting the counter corners today while I'm watching whatever movie so I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it I'm just saying I, I've never done it okay and then we've got the various different see look at how these are popping right out that is good die cutting on these counters Got different terrain tiles here. 120 of those. We've got the new sheet for the replicators. We've got the production sheets. And a little bit different. So we've got research centers and then production. Then we've got the four player aid cards for the various different ships and we've got the rule book with all the new goodies and tweaks and twists for space empires replicators which is that's what we find when we take everything outside the box 
Yes, as I mentioned before, Space Empire's Replicators is available now. It does add a fifth player to the proceedings. I will mention that once again, so now you can expand your Space Empire's 4X games to five players, and it carries an MSRP of $59. As I kind of opened up the unboxing, that sounds a little weird. Uh, as I started to mention already, I shouldn't say started, I did mention at the beginning of the unboxing, this is something that you're looking to pick up. Get it while you can. Grab it now. Don't sit on your hands and wait because GMT does not do huge print runs. This is an expansion. I can't imagine that it's a big, big print run. It might be 800, maybe 1,000. I don't think it's probably bigger than that. So if you want to expand your Space Empires 4X gaming, do it now. All right, so that is it for today's show. As I mentioned, tomorrow I will be unboxing Hero Realms as well as the various different decks that the fine folks over at White Wizard Games sent me. So I've got the different characters. I've got a couple of boss decks. I'm interested in taking a look at that because I've heard really good things about Star Realms. And when I was at Origins, they had a really big area it wasn't in the exhibitors hall. It was in kind of the gaming area, but there were a lot of companies that were in the kind of open gaming area. Maybe not so open. And they were taking up a lot of space, so they've done really good with their their other games. Uh, I did I mention this? They also sent me um, the Epic Card Gig, but I will take a look at this next week. So anyway, so I'll take a look at Hero Realms tomorrow. Oh, all right, so that's it for today. When you are not watching The Daily Dope, be sure to go and visit thegaminggang.com for all the latest in gaming news, reviews, comics, movies, TV. Come on, you know the drill by now. Get your geek on at thegaminggang.com. Once again, I'm Jeff McAleer. I will be back tomorrow. And until then, have a lovely... Valentine's Day.